Today, we're going to focus on some of the factors affecting creating or maintaining a high performance organization. Okay. Uh, one of the concepts I really like, I put a presentation before that, but you were uh, into it, the refreshment, which is going through the screen. Uh, is this one is that without the standard, there is no logical basis for any decision making. And uh, this is kind of interesting because most of decision making, at least my experience, when I work uh, with the different organizations, they make a decision based on their gut feeling or some historical data, but they don't go back and make an analysis and standardize way of uh, analyze the data that they already have or they don't have. So they don't do any kind of discovery to find out the issues that they have already or the, the contributing issues that um, make the project successful or unsuccessful and ultimately the organization successful and unsuccessful. So what is the organization performance? The performance is that basically the yield of the organization. And when we talk about organization, it could be, it would be a small business as a one person, maybe you as a president or as an owner, or it could be an organization the size of a UPS, at t or even bigger, like a US government. I think it's bigger than US government, but I don't know. Anyway, um, so it, this is apl applicable if it be done correctly, if it's formulated correctly for any organization. So if, again, if you're a small business, you can take away from the, this process, same as if you're a CEO of the multinational, multi-million dollar company. So we talk, we talk, we're going to talk about yield and uh, how we measure yield. Yield is when the, you produce, your organization produce something against the plan or the, your capacity of your organization. Okay. So here we need to have at least two variables to measure the performance of the organization. And the measurement is not just one time. You cannot just do it once a year and just you know, let it go until the next year. And the measurement should be continuous and uh, on, on a specific standard so it become meaningful or be, be meaningful, has any meaning in the organization. And the bigger the organization is, the bigger effort required for synchronization of this effort and uh, just uh, collecting all those data and uh, create a singular report that it just give you the whole picture about the performance of the organization. Okay. Any question? Uh, you, you can stop me anytime if you have a comment or if you have a question. Okay, so why we want to measure our performance? What are the reasons? I put eight here, and these are eight that I just think of. Can you think of something else beyond this eight? I put for evaluate the company, for budgeting reason, for celebrating, you know, if there is a common goal uh, or common purpose in an organization, to motivate people, promote, improve, control, learn, and so on and so forth. Can you think of anything else besides this? No? Uh, yes. What about retention? <coughs> retention of employees. There you go, retention. Uh, it, 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 again, the, the, the beauty and the danger of this thing is it's very, uh, you know, is, is, is varied from one case to another, okay? If your organization, let's say, is basically, basically is an online organization, everything is done online, you don't have that much employee, and almost everybody is a partner in business, so you don't have that problem with retention. So you don't put it here, or you don't uh, use it for promotion, but you definitely need it for the budget, evaluation, or control of the company, or even learn. You want to learn from your current operation, and just apply what you have learned from it toward uh, the future planning or uh, strategic planning of the organization. And what happens if you don't do measure? So I'm gonna give you an example. So for example, let's say for Australia, okay? If you don't measure how many students that they enroll and uh, how uh, since last, uh, during last quarter, and if you don't have a historical data of the enrollment from uh, two, three years back or four years back, you cannot plan for opening a new campus because you don't know how many students you're gonna get in this campus, if this campus is big enough, and, uh, or is it this campus is necessary at all, uh, is our advertising effective, um, uh, how we do retain the current students. You know, here at 3 I know that we use the uh, concept of net promoter, which Dr. Bao, I guess, you can 
to speak of that a lot. And uh, these are all the different type of measurement. And some organization, they do better job of doing that because they are inherently, they have more, uh, they have more data, they have more tangible data. For example, the, the car dealership has more data about the, the finance part of it, the number of the cars, and than uh, average IT company that they are providing IT services. Because this, all they do is dealing with numbers, and therefore, Collecting them is a little bit easier for those, those organizations. Uh, one of the question is, how do you know how to, comp uh, to compare with others? If you have too many competitors, because let's say if you are in a hosting business, enterprise hosting business, how do you know your, how you can differentiate yourself from other people, from data that is available on, in, a, in a public domain? For example, for our company, what we do is, on a weekly basis, we go and measure and collect all the information about our competitors and see how much, how many hit they have on their site, how many uh, potential sales they have, how much they advertise, what's their advertising budget. We don't know that, but we know how much Google charge, so we can just figure out, based on the, the presence that they have on the internet, how much they're spending. So we can adjust our, our, our campaign based on what other people do. Okay, so it's, it's very bad. Yeah, first. Now, you say competitor is there is a wide variety of competition and uh, how many competitors do you add together to something you want to Well, uh, we have a uh, very good question. Uh, what we do is uh, we have a site that we basically create a KPI, uh, Key Performance Indicator Executive Reports. And we look around, there are only five, five companies in the world that they do that, okay? Or they, 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 they try to do that. So there are five major ones, and there are a bunch of smaller ones, okay? We want to make sure that we compete with all top five and be one of the top five. And also, we want to make sure one of the smaller ones doesn't sneak up on us the way that we did on those, those top five. So it, again, it, it's, 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 very, it's, very, it's very different from each market. For, let's say for AT&T, uh, AT&T at one point was just a uh, just big giant corporation. They break up, they just get back together, and now you see smaller companies that they coming up with a similar solution and similar services, like Clear. Okay? They coming up and they provide same. So it, you have to look at it and you have to evaluate it on a con con, you know, continuous basis. Because <coughs> as soon as, for example, in my case, when I'm working with clients, and as soon as I hear, a, for example, an advertisement or somebody talk about the company that provides similar services, I, I always say, just let's go back and let's, let's investigate it. Let's go to their website. Let's call them up and let's talk to them and see you know, what, what, what they offer, what they're all about. So you have to do that. And that could be part of the measurement that you could measure that you put in place. Okay? And uh, we'll get into it a little bit later about what measure that you have to take in order to be successful. Okay? Okay. Today's focus, we're going to talk about performance. And why performance is important because it's at part of the making the strategy, creating the strategy, uh, planning, creating plan, and execution. Okay. There are a lot of things it's going on on, on each, 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 each of this group, but if we integrate the kind of unified performance and the way that we measure our strategy, it just kind of flow nicely to planning and to execution, and the results go back to strategy and planning, so it's just kind of circular motion. It helps us to be more efficient organizationally because we learn from our uh, mistakes, from the thing that we did right, and then from historical data, and the things that we don't have control over, and we can use them uh, either to help us to go to the next level or try to survive. You know, we gotta talk about it a little bit. Um, as you might saw, we, we have a, again, this is a very uh, detailed topic, and uh, for the performance, we have a uh, workshop. It's a uh, two-day intensive workshop that we go over all six steps of that we, what you need to do. Very briefly, I go through it. It's just first, understand the realities. What is the reality of your business? What is the reality of your environment? What you need to do to survive, and uh, what you can do. It's just a general understanding and recognition of the, uh, the, your organization and strategy and environment. This is where we focus today, mostly. Uh, then, uh, based on that, you create measurable objectives. A lot of companies that we work for, we go there and say, we want to be number one. Okay, what number one means? Number one where? 
here in America, globally, and uh, if you are, you have money for it, you have funding for it. So it just become we make sure to first to create those measurable objectives, and then uh, at the incubation phase, uh, well, this is the second phase of the activities, we define the cardinal performance measures. This is a similar uh, concept as a KPI, Key Performance Indicator, but the KPIs, well, they're great, we use them a lot as the starting point. Okay. Actually, our, 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 our team put together 18,000 KPIs for uh, all the industries that they, you could think of. Okay. And most companies, they just go and buy them, we're glad they do that, and they just try to use it, try to plug and force it into organization. That sometimes works for certain uh, situation, but most situations, that's not going to work because the difference is the different when we uh, create those performance measures, they are custom designed for your team, for your organization, for you as an individual considering all the realities of your company. Okay. Let's say if I'm in uh, advertising business and uh, you are in advertising business, not although we are competing on the same market, but not necessarily we have the same environment. You don't have the same financial value, you don't have the same influence, you don't have the same contract, you know? It just, you have to just consider those. So we cannot measure, use the same measurement that I use as a small uh, consulting firm for uh, marketing as you, if you're one of the, the top five uh, marketing uh, consulting firms. Uh, after that, implement, integrate, and embed the, this, this, this uh, cardinal performance measure into daily operation. And why do you put embed? Because sometimes you don't need to basically announce it to everybody on a team that you have this, but you just plug it in and uh, you collect those information and uh, you basically make a, uh, make a, a portfolio of uh, measures that basically can create analysis and give you better and a full picture of there where you are. And that's, that's where the measure, track, and analyze come in. And the most impl imp importantly, on preservation is continuous evaluation and adjustment. Because one measure maybe is, uh, is, is valid this year, maybe just not valid next year, because it's not a factor anymore, okay? And you need to continuously do that, and after that you go back and do configuration, uh, incubation, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's just kind of a continuous process throughout the, uh, your operation. Yes? <clears throat> do you typically take a, uh, a black box approach to the, the business model? I don't know or care what it is, I'm simply going to define what I want to achieve and adjust parameters until it works? Or is, is a business model created so that you figure out kind of where to tweak the knobs? Okay, uh, it, it, it's kind of both. What, okay, what we want to do, what we learned was this. We cannot come up with a framework and come to your company and say, okay, this is it. You change your company to fit my, uh, my framework, okay? Because that's not gonna work, you know? Okay. People, like people stuff do that all the you know, day in and day out, but I don't, I don't think that's a good solution, okay? So we have a general guidelines of things that need to happen, okay? Actually, let me show you this. So this is the general steps that need to happen, okay? We need to, we have workflow. We adjust the workflow based on the reality, uh, or you can create your own workflow. Okay, that uh, it, this is the reality of your your business. If you have three partner and that's it, that's uh, nobody else. It's all chip, no Indians. Uh, so you cannot just go and basically force people or force your two of your partner to generate all this report, collect this information. You just deal with your reality of your business. You come up with that. Uh, some sort of agreement among between you, so you need to collect the information that is relevant for your operation. And this is how you collect it, this is the interval, how you, you know, the, the collection interval, and um, and from that point, you know, this is, uh, you're gonna make analysis every every two months, every three months, every five months, whatever. Just make a plan out of it, and you just stick to it. So that way you know, the at the end of each month, these are the, the data points that you have to provide. The information that you need to collect from your server, maybe, not even from humans. And then based on that, you just you sit down and say, okay, this is what we collect, this is the, anal this is the analysis of it, so what we need to do. Are we keeping that? Or are we gonna just uh, carry it on for next, uh, next, next iteration, iteration for next year? And most importantly, what are you gonna do with it? Okay, if, so, if, if something is just indication of, if something is broken, you have to fix it. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, Jared mentioned, you know, I'm flying, and uh, it happens that my instructor is here today, 
So what, what we do? If something is wrong, just fix it immediately. We just don't hope, okay, we are just losing altitude, just hoping or just thinking, we have to just fix a problem, right? Or if there is something, some light comes up, you have to address a problem. We just don't uh, let it unnoticed, like the corporate America did. The fish look and thinking that, okay, this is gonna go away. Okay, we run out of fuel, but hey, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, any other question on this? So you need to create, we, we, we put together, this is kind of uh, just general guidelines for most organizations. And uh, if it's a much smaller company, most of this thing goes away because it's just you and it's not a few partners. But for a bigger organization, we do this for one group and then we just like a, we create a template. So the data come from group A is almost identical from the data that come from group B. Okay, so uh, we define four dimension for uh, organizational performance. And uh, these are, again, it depends on the organization. They have different uh, weights in your organization. So they are effectiveness, efficiency, relevance, and financial vi uh, viability. And everything else is basically subgroup under this, this four. Okay? And I'm sure for most of us, you know, effectiveness and efficiency is very important. We need to be relevant. Because if you're not relevant, it's not gonna have, uh, our product has nothing to add to customers. And most likely, you're not gonna get any customers or we're gonna start losing customers. And financial viability, we, we need to have some sort of income Either if you're a charity or if you're a nonprofit, we need to do some contributions come keep coming in. We need to make sure we, we plan for that, we measure that. And if you are a for profit organization, we better make sales or we have a way to just raise capital for what we do. Okay. And uh, in case of for example university, we want to make sure enough students come in. So it just help to sustain the operation of the organization or we have uh, some wealthy person come in and just give us a grant so we can just build in more buildings like average universities in America. It's just expanding with no reason. And um, that's not straight, I'm talking about traditions. <laughs> 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 uh, so, uh, all, okay. uh, so, organization performance is a function of all these four. Okay. If, for example, Again, we are, it is important for us to be efficient, but if you are, let's say, US government, probably we don't care much about efficiency, as long as other things get done you know, the way that we want. So we go and put a uh, weight into this uh, system, and these basically have a number, and at the end, we, we end up with one number that is kind of represent general uh, understanding of where we are, efficient, uh, efficient one. And also, we create a chart like this, that it, it shows that where we are, how effective we are from zero to 100, how financially viable we are, how efficient we are, and how relevant we are, okay? Going back to this, uh, these are the, the four parallel uh, track for the, um, for this, 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 this is the dimension of the, uh, the, the, uh, the realities. We go back and just make sure uh, you understand it. Under the, the first one, uh, for the effectiveness. How we measure effectiveness? Where the guidelines come from? Okay, it depends on the type of organization that we have. Either we have a mandate, or if we have a kind of bunch of people get together, we have a goal, or uh, we have a charter, mission, or strategic objectives. No matter which, which, which it is, or it could be something else. Somebody empower us, some, somebody deputize us to do something. We want to make sure they are measurable no matter which, which of this. For example, if we are a uh, nonprofit organization for helping people to, uh, that they, they, the disaster area after, uh, as, after earthquake, okay, that's our mission. So we need to come up with a mission that is measurable. We need to put time frame, we need to put on our jurisdiction, uh, something that we can just measure our performance against, okay? For example, we can say our, our goal is, our mandate is, our mission is to be as the first responder for earthquake disaster area in North America within 24 hours. See, now everything is very specific and we can't just measure ourselves. Well, the last time before we have an earthquake in San Francisco and how long it took us to get there, okay, San Francisco is in North America, 
to be able to get there, and so on and so forth. And if, if we have an earthquake in Asia, if we can go help, that's great. But this doesn't count against our performance because it took us 36 hours to get there. Okay, does it make sense? So you need to implement a something that is measurable. Efficiency. Efficiency is uh, performing best possible manner with less, least waste of time and effort. Okay. Again, this is very subjective. It depends what what you do uh, organizationally. You can measure it differently. Uh, for, I don't know. Give me an example. Of what you do? Uh, as a how you measure your efficiency right now? That's a tough one. That's exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I run multiple different organizations, and a couple of them are development or software development organizations. And we're kind of going through a manpower load analysis now, and we're in this discussion now: of how efficient is a developer? in a typical month of manpower day hours. Exactly. And, you know, that's, that's it's very tough. It's a little difficult. Yeah. It, 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 this, this looks very simple, but if you start working on them, they become so tough because all of a sudden you have to go against uh, the variables and factors that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And uh, you just, for example, in that one, I know how tough it is because all of a sudden you have to deal with the mentality of how the project gets estimated. In one of the companies that uh, I work with, they have a general, they have three sizes, they, they call it t-shirt sizing. This is small, medium, and large. Okay, with large, automatically two year effort. So, and that, that's a standard that they use. Now, if you want to go and implement some, measure, uh, some, implement some measures to measure their efficiency, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna stand back and they're just gonna, sh you know, they said, they're gonna, they're gonna shoot you down because they know when you implement those, you find out that, that the same job that can be done in six months, it takes them two years now. But they sandbag and they make sure that they are, uh, it's a culture thing, you know. It'd be nice to know what other people are doing. I mean, you know, my directors want a 75% efficiency. You know, my VPs are pushing for like, you know, an 80, 85, and I'm pushing for like a 90, <laughs> but, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see you know, other people are and I'm sure that I, issue. Exactly. And as a developer, I used to be a developer for Apple, so I, I, I'm happy with 10%. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, they, they want a lower efficiency, plus they're fudging the numbers on how, how many man hours it takes to get things done, plus this, plus that. In my mind, it's all I end up to, not efficiency. Exactly, exactly. And so, yeah. The other thing is, like, you're talking about software, but uh, we do video and web and photography and put together pretty complex multimedia projects. and. Part of it's trust. Part of it is allowing people time to think. And I, I talk to some folks in my staff and say, I tell them, you know, part of your efficiency might be to go to the top of Stone Mountain and sit on the mountain and look at the sunset while you're thinking through stuff and making notes. And I have no problem with that because you need some time to think. And then the bad part is when you're doing a creative project or you're doing a lot of thinking through how to write a script or how to, how to put together a, a website or whatever, you need to think. And when the boss walks by and you're thinking, you're not working in his, his or her eyes. And so you have to build in to create projects and, and these, these types of situations the ability for folks to, to trust the folks that when they tell you they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're not there. Yeah, you're right. You know, so you have to, this, it is, but when it's done correctly, for example, if you're the boss and you set up all the measures that you you know that is important for you, and you see the data is coming, yeah. okay, it will change your perception. So probably people can space out in their you know their queue all day, mm -hmm. but at the end of the week you see that they perform. So you don't care, exactly. you know. That's exactly right. But if we don't well, have boss, that, boss doesn't understand that. Well, because they don't, their perception is if, if somebody, if they, if they can hear the, the clicking noise, yeah. it wasn't in the Simpsons that he just bring you know, some uh, birds and put it on the keyboard, <laughs> and the, the bird was just, just hitting the keyboard, and the, you know, his boss thought he's working, and so, oh, he's a good employee, you know? <laughs> this is our perception, because we don't you have good measures. That now, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can also, I mean, you know, yeah, that's a very good point, you know, and, and, you know, you go back and look at your KPIs or your measurements from the past, mm -hmm. how efficient were they? Past, you know, I mean, I don't have a problem with 
you know, a guy sitting around thinking about how he's going to design a software program or something. What I have problems with is, you know, have the development team wants to go to Starbucks and hang out because they have internet. You know, that that's kind of you know where we get into this little conflict. Yeah, but can't you can't you measure that at a higher level? Because like I find like with software development, it's hard to get down to the developer level. To your point, because it is a creative process. So maybe you raise it up and measure it at the project level. Yeah, so I'm saying the KPIs from yeah. past projects you can look at. Yeah. You know, during this project, everybody was really efficient. So you know, I saw them sitting around. So maybe they really were doing something. Right. Yeah. So it, it just it's very important to just find exactly what's worked for your organization. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, within one organization, you know, from one building to another, because of the culture and the perception of that building is kind of different, people work differently. You know? Again, I, 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 had, I was in a project for almost six years for, for uh, UPS. It used to be across the street from here. And they created the Inoplex because they want to create the kind of anti-corporate mentality that it was in Glenridge. You have to wear, uh, you know, if I wear this suit or did this way, they didn't even live in the building. Okay, but here you can wear jeans. Initially, you can wear shorts, and uh, it was an open area. Uh, it was uh, people just kind of they have a kind of those movable uh, cubicles, so you can move as you wish, you know, and uh, just open up the space uh, in an ad hoc have an ad hoc meeting. And they thought this is the, the way of future. Okay, but guess what happened? They measured the, the performance of people here the same way they measured the performance of people in the Glendale. Okay, they come in and said. What is this? Why people play ping pong? Well, because the ping pong table is there. Why people play playing billiard? Because that was the early 2000, 2001 kind of mentality. Open up the space for more creative. And when you do that, you have to change your measures. Otherwise, it's just somebody gonna get very angry. And ultimately, they did. And they changed culture. And then a few years ago, they shut down the buildings because they said this is against corporate culture that we have. It doesn't fit in our measures, and I don't, we don't think that it works the way that we want it to. So it's, it's very tricky. It's very tricky. I have a question. This question, right, is like we need the pro I mean, I'm probably applying a software paradigm to that, but there is a process where you're coming up with your design, so to speak. You're thinking, what are you shooting for? How does it look like? What feel or something? So at least if you start measuring first, so just ask, how much time did you spend just thinking about it? How much time did you spend, you know, coming up with the storyboard? How much time did you take it to, you know, render that on the computer or something? And then how much time did you think of getting it animated or something? Mm -hmm. So at least if you get some sense of these metrics, does it lend itself to say, okay, over time you build a model that John takes a lot of design time, but his execution is faster. Joe takes less design, but his execution is slower. And it's kind of an iterative across them. So maybe it gives you a way of measuring or coming up with a good medium to say, mm -hmm. I hold you accountable that end to end, you're going to take about a week for this kind of a project. You're absolutely right. And that's why we call understanding the realities. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first thing, that's what you do. You understand the realities and the things that you have control over and the things that you don't have control over. Okay. Probably the way that uh, the, the, the developers work at the Square 22 is very different than at t Okay, because different dynamic, different company size. So if I'm coming, as a kind of an uh, uh, expert in performance, and I have a template, and I said, okay, this is how you do it, and I take the same template, come to at and and uh, could do it at at and it's not gonna work. So you have to know how people work at uh, at and what the at and culture is, and what the Square 22 culture is. Actually, four years ago, I was uh, working on the same project on Verizon and at and you know, they were both in Greenberg across the street, and they know that I'm working on the same project. And surprisingly, they have some elements that are almost identical. They have, they have to deal with the same problems. Okay, I didn't tell either of them, they have the other side have the same problem. And they have their own unique culture of issues, uh, culture of problems. Although the, the programmer for uh, the, the tower, they, they have a uh, operating system for tower, operating the, the cell tower. They are different technology. Okay, they have similar issues as far as the capacity, but they have a very, very different, you know, even approach for solving some problems. And they are in the exact same industry. They are almost they come from the same company. They when they break up the, the big AT and T, uh, and they deal with the same problem, but they have their own unique problem. So you have to just look at very subjectively one case to another. Sometimes you have to be different from one team to another, and you have to come up with a way that you just 
bring all the data together from within a company, although they're slightly different. You have to give them different weight you know, mechanisms so that they make it become more meaningful. Okay? So uh, we talk about the effectiveness, we talk about the efficiency, uh, the relevancy of our organization, or the relevancy of what we do. How relevant are the tasks to our own mission? How relevant is our organization to the customer need or stakeholder needs? Okay. A lot of time we don't do that. We don't just sit back and think, okay, so does, does it matter what stuff that we do? Or we can do something different so become need, we just captured the niche market. Does it matter for us to, to respond to certain things in a certain way? And if we cannot, we are not relevant anymore. For example, in the case of that uh, example I gave you for an uh, earthquake, if we cannot get into earthquake uh, victims within 24 hours or even five days, that's the case of Katrina, so our organization is irrelevant. You know, we are spending millions and millions of dollars per, day, uh, per year for sustaining our operation, but when it comes to delivering the solution or the service, we cannot do it. So we have to just put measurements to make sure that uh, we are not at, at that stage. And if we just... It, to me, this seems like the hardest one of the, the metrics. I, I wonder, you know, for example, before the launch of the Microsoft Zoom, how relevant did they think it was? You know, after the launch, you would say, well, apparently not at all. It looked, you know, it functioned just like the iPod, but nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. You know, was it not relevant? You know? <clears throat> And how do you put a number to that? You know, in the chart, it, it shows uh, you know, 0 to 100. How do you put a number to that? I think initially, you have to just go with whatever information you can collect. Uh, let's say we are working all with Microsoft. We try to figure that problem, OK? Uh, we have to go with the numbers that it, it, it is available to us by just bringing the customer, go stand by Apple Store, you know, by the customer come out and ask them a question, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, we just bring a reality into it. And most companies, they just kind of, they so get so excited about the solution, they just pretend that those are the, the problems are not there anymore. Okay. What is the, is, is there an uh, acid test for relevance? Like, yeah, but nobody's buying it. Mm -hmm. You know, is that the ultimate metric? Is it really uh, attempting to capture demand or revenue or? But nobody buying it is, is an outcome, it's not the indicator, right? So for example, as you said, so let's say I'm going out with Zoom, right? Why am I coming up with Zoom? Why am I not resetting iPod, right? What my reason was that Zoom provides a different value than an iPod. Maybe it plays better with 95% of the Windows computers out there. The question is, if our not buying is a result, right? You want to figure out, okay, which part of these five things it, it's more interoperable, interoperable with Windows. It's got a better UI. Uh, it's got better capabilities. It's, it's got a better price. So you have these five different metrics. So you want to find out, like, okay, fine, which one of those is the key pain point? Or you're expecting the price point to be the killer, right? Maybe people don't just care for the fifty dollars they save, considering that the marketplace does not have enough sound in it, right? It, I, I hear you. My problem with that is before they launched. Lots of people, some of them with PhDs, thought it was a brilliant idea and tremendously relevant. That's the problem. <laughs> 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 and they, that's probably exactly the stuff they, they looked at. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think, uh, okay, uh, well, first of all, I think they didn't, okay, what, one thing that Apple do perfectly, I guess, um, I'm a little bit biased. I used to work for them a long, long time ago, and I use their product. But one thing that they do, they determine, they know what we're going to like, even we don't know that we like that, okay? So it just they do a lot of uh, measures on the human behavior, okay? So if you think about it, you know, Apple wasn't the first one come up with the iPhone. You know, Samsung was way before Apple. You know, even four or five years before that they have that smartphone, okay? But they didn't consider the elements that human likes, okay? So when Apple come with the iPhone, people said, "Oh, this is nice." I like to be, you know, have a kind of this kind of navigation. This is this this feel right, okay? And they measure those and they deliver on those. And everybody else they try to make catch up. 
Okay, we don't talk about it. And so, oh, Apple is catching on this iPad thing, so let's go and create an iPad, you know, the pad device that is just is heavier, bigger, or nicer, whatever it is. But they cannot get it right. Why? Because they don't think doing it right. Same thing with Microsoft Windows, okay? It's surprising that I say this, but Microsoft Windows, they think a lot about the human aspect of it, okay? So you can do, make it kind of difficult to use for some people, but you can do certain things 10 different ways. You know, that's why I really don't like to teach the, uh, anybody's computer anymore because I teach them one way and say, oh, so you can do this, you can do this. Because somebody else told me to do this. Why? Because they sat down and they created a UI, user interface, that people are very comfortable with it. Okay, you can resize the window from any angle, from any point. Apple didn't have it until the last year. Even they don't have it now. Why did? Because they went and put the measures, and they measure things that is important for human uh, human being to use use for. Okay, it all goes back to what is the essential for your operation or for your product. And there's no magic. I don't think there's an acid test. Okay. But what, it think, what, what I think it is, they, sh they can prototype it and be honest with it and go out and uh, put it on a table with another device and tell people, give it to a child and try to see how it works. Give iPhone, just try, try this. Get an iPhone or iPad, give it to a three or four years old kid with no instruction. They will figure out, do something with it sooner or later, right? Because it's very natural. Give a Zoom or the other devices to other, you know, you know, give, give it Android device to the same kid. He gets frustrated right away. Yes? Say, um, on Steve Jobs was saying that, you know, and he said, I don't believe in this focus group. That's what he, what he said before. And you know, consumers don't know what they want until you put it in front of them. And, and that's what I'm saying. Prototype it and just in front of them. Put it in and just, just be don't have any bias toward your real product. If people use it, they use it. If they don't, just maybe this is not the right product. And that goes for everything that we do, okay? Um, and the financial viability, well, this is a very obvious one. If we, there's no money, there's no operation. If you are for profit, we have to generate money or we have to have a kind of a wealthy person to, to support us or uh, the money should come from somewhere. And if you are uh, not for profit, we need to have grants and means of finances. So we need to have a measure to see, make sure we have a continuous availability of the funds and how we spend them and how we spend them wisely. Okay. okay, so now let's talk about factors that are affecting the organizational performance in general. Okay, those were, those were those four dimensions. Now we talk about the factors. And the way the factors come in, so if you imagine these are parallel one, and they have the factors that are affecting every single uh, dimension as we go. Uh, we group them into four, is uh, uh, organizational maturity, the capacity, human factors, and macro factors. In general, this talk about how mature your organization is that uh, about creating, uh, planning, executing, <coughs> and uh, managing and communicating uh, within an organization. Capacity is a true capacity of an organization. Uh, what, what's the capacity, what's, how capable is your organization is. Uh, human factors, anything to deal with the humans is that. Maybe, you know, for Apple thing, you know, that you have to consider all the human factors. Okay, maybe you have everything else. Microsoft has everything else, if you think about it. They are big enough, they have money, they're kind of mature enough, they have capacity, but they're missing something, I guess, in the human side. So that's why they're not uh, very successful on certain products. And the macros, they're like, uh, the factors that you have no control over, like economy, we will talk about it. And, and similar to the, uh, the dimensions, we put together a diamond chart, and it shows how, you, the, what, how your organization leans toward which, which factor, which, which factor you're most strongest. For example, in this example, we are a very mature organization, and we are not doing as well in human, and the capacity, they're good, and financial, uh, uh, maturity, yeah. Uh, and macro factors, we are okay. Um, capacity, we are very good. Human, we're not doing good, and the maturity, we are, we are very pretty good. So, as an executive, when you see this, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 
what we can do to improve this. Okay, it's just very quick. And you can compare it to the last one, last year, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, if you have that data and information. And then you can see the trend. Certain activity that you did in an organization tend to respond and make it better or worse in certain things. And then again, in macro factors, uh, you have no control over it, so you have to learn how to uh, dodge those issues or uh, avoid those landmines. Uh, going back to the maturity, we defined six different levels from reactive to culturized uh, organization. Reactive is when, for example, uh, Apple come up with the path, everybody's just waiting for it, everybody says it's going to fail, and they see a lot of uh, good response from a the customer, they sold a lot, and said, okay, now we need to have a path. Engineers create a path, and as a result, it's not as well thought of pro uh, product as the, the original product they tried to react to. Uh, the second level is proactive, it's a little bit more mature. They think about things that they can, they can do and not be as reactive. And uh, again, these are very uh, general areas, and there are some overlapping kind of activities in between two. And next level is the forward thinking. You think about future, the things that you need to do to be kind of ahead of your team, ahead of your process, ahead of your uh, uh, activities. Be predictive, basically start looking at the data from the past and just analyze them and try to work them out. Optimize is when you have those data, you have those analysis and start optimizing the processes that need to be optimized. And culturize when you just do that cluster organization. Okay. Again, if you're a small company, you can do this in two months if you do it right. If you if you're a company size of at t or UPS, it takes years because you have to change the culture of the organization. It's not only just about the collection of the data and analysis of data, it's about how you're gonna use the data as well. Any questions? Okay. Again, these are the levels. And for us to determine the, the, the maturity of the organization, we look at the trends on organizational decision making, how we make a decision in an organization, how we deal with the risk management. Are we just taking risk kind of without knowing how, what are the impacts of it? Do we know what type of risk we are against, up against? The communication in the organization, the structure of the organization, if it's very flat, very hierarchical, and uh, too many bosses knowing that they're you know, Indians and some, or vice versa. Uh, organizational knowledge, how knowledge is being created and disseminated and uh, protected in organization. Alignment is how the, the different aspect of the company, they're, they're within the organization, they work with each other. For example, how well IT works with the HR and how, how well HR works with the managers and the so on and so forth. And execution, one of the very important ones. How well we execute things. Okay. And uh, these are basic questionnaire. For each of them, there are about 100 questions that we just give to people. At the, usually we start at the top, and then we just ask them, include people that they want to include. And then we collect the data, and we create this report for maturity. And we determine how mature the organization is at that point of time. And there are some overlapping areas, again, deliberately, so because we want to make sure that nobody just, just try to play out the, the, the system. And it's a typical kind of a uh, questionnaire that we have. And at the end, again, we create a radar chart, and it shows the strong areas and the weak areas. So in this organization, for example, the organization decision making, they're doing very poorly. They cannot make their mind on time for any reason. But the structure, they're very organizationally very sound. They're very well structured. Everybody knows what they're doing, and so on and so forth. The capacity factors, is, this one is a very abstract because uh, each company is very different. If you have a software shop, it's different than if you have a marketing business or if you have, if you have a pharmaceutical company or if you have a manufacturer. So you have to just look at it and adjust it accordingly. Uh, at capacity, uh, we look at the strategic leadership, who they are, and uh, how, what's their capacity, personal capacity of the leaderships are. Uh, the structure, the human resources, financial resources, infrastructure, program management, so, uh, and uh, process management, and inter organizational uh, linkage. 
And as you can see, there are again some overlapping with the, with the uh, organizational maturity because we just want to make sure we discover everything that it needs to be discovered. Okay. And at the end, we have this radar, and it shows you the same thing. Okay. And but again, keep in mind, if let's say if we don't have to deal with any financial resources, we can take it out, and the chart looks slightly different, but it gives you a similar picture. Or maybe there are things that that we need to be included as a kind of a major factor group, and we include those, and because we make it relevant, or we should make it relevant for our operations. You don't just go there. Okay, if if you have activity out of this six or seven, uh, tough luck. You don't do it. You don't deal with that. A lot of people, a lot of models do that, and this model is very flexible to what you do and what you need to do. The human factors. Anything has to do with humans. And uh, these are like history, mission, culture, religion, uh, the direction, control, uh, the agendas that people have, safety for some organization, the work or environment, uh, resource development, and so on and so forth. Uh, it just is fall into this group. And this one, interestingly enough, it just becomes look like a guy. You know, it's just kind of like a prop guy. <laughs> it just, it just, it's just random uh, numbers. And in this one, uh, if you can see uh, the motivation, we do a very bad job of motivation of motiv motivating our, our employees, our workers, and uh, accountability is almost as bad as motivation. Uh, but the coordination is very good coordination. People know what our missions are, and leadership we have a good leadership. But anything else, and they they know they know the direction. But we really need to work on motivation, motivating our people, and accountability of the, our people, and. Uh, External orientation. Maybe it's the case of the people don't know what their organization is doing. They know what they, they're supposed to do in their team, but in grand scheme of things, they don't know how what the organization does. So if that's important for us, we can go and fix it based on this information that we collected. Okay. So do you typically sit down with the, in organization, sit down with the individuals in the organization and go through a questionnaire survey? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the way it works is uh, same as our workshop. Uh, the way that, for example, we have our current workshop and the people who participate in the workshop, we send them this questionnaire, we ask them to answer this question and come back and we treat it as a uh, kind of a live case. Okay, so now we, are, we usually have 20 people in our workshop. It's okay, we all work for the same companies, okay, and we collect this information, this data, and now let's do whatever it takes, how we can come up with measures to, to address the reality of what we do. Okay. And for some organization at top level, at, uh, or their, their, their direct you know, vice president level, mm -hmm. and uh, for some organization, if it's, it's possible, we like to do this from top to bottom. Because the perception of uh, me as a kind of worker bee of the organization and how everything gets done is very different than you, know, you as a president of the company. And the larger organization get, more different our perception is. But the reality is you need to know what I think or what my perception, what understanding of me is, because there are 300,000 of you. And most organizations, they don't have that perception. They, they just kind of disconnect between what they think at the top and what it is in, in the reality. And also, you know, our model says that you, know, you plan from top to bottom, but you execute from bottom up. And if as a worker bee, I don't know what I'm doing, how it's relevant, and I'm not motivated, guess what? Probably I'm not the only one. And as a result, if the thing doesn't get executed correctly in organization. Do you metric that against a ideal organization? There is no such thing. There is no such thing as an ideal organization because each organization is different. We, we went through something similar where in our department, everyone had a sit-down meeting with uh, a consultant. And it was a, well, to take that back, the management team had a sit-down. But then all the folks in the organization took a questionnaire that was pretty extensive. It was two questions. And it was real, the questions were not at all pointed to where you think they would go. It would be situational, it would be, you know, I'm more comfortable in this, or in this, in this organization, I, can get ahead by doing such and such, you know, either true or false or multiple choice or something like that. And I strongly agree, strongly disagree. But then it, we came up with a, not we, the 
consultant came up with a graph like that. And but they said that the most successful organizations, let me show you what their graph turns out to look like. The ones that are high performing that we, we could do the metrics. And, and here's the gaps between where you are and where they are. And it was helpful because we could say but it was somewhat discouraging, but at the same time it was like, don't feel discouraged, just take one or two things that you think can move your deepest line mm -hmm. toward the, the ideal organization. It was actually very helpful. Yes, and for that, we do the same, okay? Uh, when you said that uh, I do organization, I thought you have just one for everybody. It's, it's very, yeah, if we just go and look at the, uh, a similar organization, a similar environment, as close as possible, and you just say, okay, this is how everybody else is trending, and you probably want to do that. Or if you want to surpass them, you need to do the A, B, C, D. And the most important thing, thing is just, most of these activities is just activity, okay? You go back to work, it's just kind of business as usual. Nothing that get done and, uh, at all. And that's very sad because this thing costs money, time, effort, and you know, if you don't do anything with it, and again, because of the measurement, as I said, it's a continuous thing. And you have to measure and just implement. Measure and implement. And just become a culture. When you become a culture, then you know, it's a, probably if you do, Whatever if they, they recommended that that uh, that, that uh, consulting firm, probably you work much farther. I don't know if you did that. Did you implement any of those or not? We did. We came up with two, really just two or three specific things to work on, and then came up with just a couple of action items to try to move the bar. And the idea is to go back you know, next year and see if things change. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, for some organization, you know, for instance, uh, at the Strayer, I know we 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 determined that there is a one thing that's important. There's this net 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 uh, promoter, you know, uh, plan. That is it. Are you gonna uh, what is it? Are you gonna uh, recommend Strayer to somebody else? That shows that you're satisfied with what your experience with Strayer. Nothing else is matter for a student if they are happy enough to recommend us to somebody else. That's all that matters. And everything else is just build behind that, you know, that, that one question. Okay. For some other organization like an IT or more complex organization when you have a lot of interaction, between internal interaction, uh, that probably is not gonna work. You need to have something else. Okay. Maybe you need to have different goals and measures for the different uh, function, uh, function group in a, in, a, in a team. But they have to be somehow linked together so it become meaningful. Uh, very quick, let's uh, go over the macro factors. Macro factors are the factors that we have no control. Usually, we have no control over. It's like uh, administrative, legal, politics, social, culture, uh, econ macroeconomy. You know, we have no control over price of dollar, so we have to deal with it. Uh, we have to have a strategy to deal with it. We have to have tactic, tactical plan to deal with it. If if our business depends on the dollar, price of dollar. Let's say if we are importing uh, raw material from overseas and we process it and we sell it here and we have only 15% margin, profit margin, if the price of dollar just dive uh, by, per, by, by 50%, all of a sudden our cost goes 200%, right? And if you don't have a plan to address that issue, we, we cannot control the price of dollar, but if you, you should have a plan to have it as a backup plan, if you don't have that already, and we don't have a measurement and an early warning uh, system to tell us something is going gonna go wrong in any of these factors, we are in for a good, bad, very bad surprises. And again, the smaller we are, more vulnerable we are, and sometimes the bigger we are, more vulnerable we are. So uh, there are some, if they make it illegal to, to make a phone call from the PDA because of some, some, something happened, Guess what's gonna happen? A lot of companies are in trouble, including Apple, because now most of the, the, their sales come from the selling the iPhones. And if you become illegal to use iPhone to make a call, because Nokia can win and sue them and just make it a law that you cannot do that anymore because uh, they have patents, which actually they do for some weird reason. So you have to have a plan. So if the, this uh, plan A doesn't work, as a result of this, this is our plan B, and we need to have a measures to know that the plan A is not going to work or it start not working, it just gives us some sort of indication of where we are. 
And this one again, we just most likely just gonna have like a web type of uh, graphs and it gives us the biggest picture. So in this one, it shows that we are socially and culturally, we are very vulnerable and then legally. So these are things that may impact us in a negative way. And uh, we, there are certain things that we can do. And if you go international, if you have international business, then this is even more important because now all of a sudden you have to deal with a different economy, different culture, different social settings, and the legal settings, and so on and so forth. And basically this brings this even farther down because you become more vulnerable. Okay, uh, before we start discussion, uh, this is just was a broad kind of overview, or after, <laughs> is a business, business of, uh, performance uh, performance appreciation 101, as I call it. It just got a just general uh, conversation about the, uh, we have a, a workshop, if you're interested, in coming up on August 16 and 17, and uh, it's a very intensive workshop, it's almost 16 hours, and uh, we send out the, all this questionnaire to you, so you do that beforehand, and then you come prepared, and you come with the, all the analysis that it, we, we collected. And then we sit down and we go over all those stages at the same, you know, together, and give you a good kind of a, uh, hands-on experience how you can do that. And then when you walk away, you have the spreadsheet and everything that you need, and you can replicate that for your organization if it's a small organization, a small to medium organization. For a bigger organization, it, a lot of things need to happen to uh, for data collection. So, uh, so that's the thing. And um, uh, if I'm correct, well, we have that in Atlanta on August, and we have, unless if you don't want to come to that one, we have one in London and one in Moscow later on. And the Moscow one is probably the most, most, most fun. But you can tell translator, I guess. But uh, that one, uh, well, we work with TechLex again. TechLex is the uh, co-sponsor of the event. And uh, for the TechLex members, or people who attend the meetings, uh, it's, uh, I guess, you just almost 50% discount. And uh, also you get 16, 32 or 16? Uh, 1630 PDU. I, guess it's, I think it's 32 PDU. So if you are have some business certification, you can just apply that toward that. And uh, if you have any question on that, you can just see me, Ben, or Anna. And we just more than happy to give you more information on that. Having said that, uh, let's talk about now. Let's have a discussion. If you have any question or anything that you know, just give me a, just just if you don't mind, just bring the live example of the challenges that you have on your performance management, and you can just talk about it if you want. Yes? Just curious how, how your approach might change if you look at uh, subunits within a total organization. Um, and in many, you know, many people are in IT. Um, in, in many companies, IT is viewed as a cost center, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a profit center, or you know, simply they just really don't much think about it. We just got to do it, so we do it. Budget line item, but that's it. How does that impact the analysis? I mean, things like financial liability and all that just become a different problem. How do you approach that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. That's my actually that's my PhD dissertation. So, oh. I'm up there. <laughs> so I can talk about this forever. <laughs> but but in general, uh, in those settings, not only just for IT. If it, let's say if there's an operation unit that we want to do this. We consider a lot of stuff that uh, from the larger organization as a macro uh, mac macro factors. There are things that in IT we have control over. Let's say if I'm CIO of the company, there are certain things I have control over, and there are a lot of things I'm not I don't have any control over. Okay, because although I'm a CIO, but I'm not in an inner circle of the decision makers. Okay, so I have to consider those decisions as a kind of macro factors and take control of things that I can take control of. Does that make sense? Yes. So you yeah, just just you have to just look at that approach, and uh, and also when you start doing the measuring, actually I think the CIOs and CTOs they are in a very good situation because guess who has access to all the data? We do, right? Because when we 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 collect all the data, if we know what the data start to collect, and if we, we clever, if we have a clever way to make a report and uh, analyze that, anal analyze them and just start showing that reports to people who are making decisions, 
guess what? We start getting included into those meetings. We start getting included into decision making process. And then you can start making changes at that level. Right. You know? And some organization, you know, for example, CTO, they have a CEO and CIO and CTO. Okay. CTO is just uh, doing all dirty stuff, and the CIO, at least, he gets invited to some of the executive meetings. And he actually turned the whole vote around that to the point that I heard that they're going to merge those two together and make it a real executive uh, position. So again, it's all about information. We have access to information. We are the king of the information, supposedly, right? And uh, so I guess that's, that's, that's the one thing that we can do. And also, we should show what is the value. Yes, we are a cost center, but nobody goes back and just to, to evaluate what's the value that we bring to the organization. All they see is, yes, this million dollar uh, bill for our data center at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year. And nobody tell them this data data center generate them $5 billion. And when it comes to cost cutting, oh, we have a data center. Just shut it down. Let's farm it up. Let's give it to somebody else. Which is, if you have a data, if the data tells us to do that, yes, yeah, perfectly fine. Let's do that. But most of the time, people, you right, see, see, see the IT department or IT, I, IS department as a kind of a, either support or cost center. Thank you. Sure. Another question or anything that you like to talk about? Okay. So uh, before we start heading for the coffee and thing, uh, the the next session that we're going to talk about again, we just we try to bring the, the management and strategy uh, aspect of the business into the uh, technological side of it. And uh, next talk is going to be about uh, enterprise data mining, the actual way that we can get information uh, out in a in a most efficient way. And uh, after that, uh, we're going to have uh, talk about the relationship between technology and customer satisfaction. But uh, we are open for any topic that you think it would be interesting for you. Because ultimately, this is just for just exchanging ideas. And uh, I, we just want to make sure we have enough time to be bring the experts in, in, uh, just in our area to come and talk about you know, what they can do the best and how we can help. And uh, uh, as far as tech execs uh, uh, meetings, we're going to have, we try to have one Hopefully the next one at Emory University. It's kind of a regular format. And uh, hopefully we're going to send out information on that. And in, if you not take the exec uh, member or you're not on the list, just make sure just visit the website, takeexec.net, uh, take and uh, just sign up. And uh, you, hopefully we see you more. And there's a membership if you'd like to join. There's some membership benefits and uh, also we need speakers. If you're CEO, CIO, or if you are at the director level, you know, just let, let, let us know. And uh, we hope to put you in a panel. And uh, we just kind of use that as a kind of another way of disseminating information and a discussion. Okay. If there's no more question, just, just enjoy the rest of the day. Eat as much as possible. Otherwise, we have to take it home. And uh, again, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.